sent his lamb they called him Jesus he came to love heal and forgive he lived and died to buy my pardon an empty grave is there to prove my Savior
Our call to confession this morning is taken from 1 John chapter 1, verse 8. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us join together in, in uh, saying a prayer of confession. Forgive us our sins, O Lord, the sins of our present and of our past, the sins of our souls, our words, and our bodies, the sins we have done to please ourselves, and the sins we have done to please others. Forgive us our casual sins and our deliberate sins and those we have labored so to hide that we have hidden them even from ourselves. Forgive us, O Lord, forgive all our sin only by your grace, for Jesus' sake, amen. Continue to worship as we sing from the fourth psalm, Faith and Peace. Six, four. 
Let's pray together one more time. Father, we thank you for your word and your promise, the promise of the Holy Spirit to dwell within us, that indeed we would never be alone. No matter what we face, that in all the joys and the sorrows and the challenges and the victories, that you are with us and you have us covered. Give us ears to hear. Fill us with faith. We thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. The word of God, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I will come to you. If you love me, you would have rejoiced because I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me. But I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise. Let us go from here. Johnny Erickson Tata has for decades had a ministry, Johnny and friends. Johnny has been a quadriplegic since a diving accident as a teenager. And she ministers to families with disabilities. Bon Clark in our assembly grounds has hosted Johnny and friends at times in one of their retreats. And at the end of one of the five-day retreats that she did with families, and a microphone was passed around, and participants had an opportunity to say a few sentences about what was meaningful or how fun the week had been or what they had learned. And one of those that wanted the mic was uh, a guy named Jeff. And uh, Jeff had really won the hearts of uh, the people there at the retreat through the week. Jeff has Down syndrome. And he took the microphone, and the only thing he said was, let's go home. Later, his mom was talking to Johnny and said, Jeff really missed his dad. He had to work this week, so he couldn't come to the family retreat this time. Uh, He had a great time. He had a fun-filled week. But he was ready to go home because he was missing his daddy. This world is pleasant enough. 
Johnny says, I'm not looking for a lifelong family retreat. I'm with Jeff. I miss my daddy, my Abba father. My heart longs to go home. She says, don't miss the chance down here on earth to begin investing in eternity so that heaven can be your heart's home. John 14 is taking place in the upper room where Jesus had gathered his disciples for the last Passover feast together. And during their meal, Jesus takes bread and he takes the cup of wine and he shows what the Passover was ultimately pointing toward, God's deliverance of his people through Jesus through the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so the chapter begins, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. It's as if Jesus is saying, I'm dying for you to meet my Father I am dying for you to meet my Father. C.S. Lewis, remarking on how God does indeed provide joys and delights and happiness and um, beauty throughout our journey on earth, but always there is a mixed bag of troubles and hardships for ourselves and for others. So that C.S. Lewis says, our Father refreshes us on the journey with some pleasant ends, but will not encourage us to mistake them for home. Problems in our own world often provoke people to try to create a utopian society. We will create heaven on earth. And as pretty much every movie about utopian societies show us, it doesn't take long to dissolve into a dystopian society because the problem is in the human heart. The problem is everyone wanting to do their own thing. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. That is the psalm that's come back to me and just floated around in my mind and in my heart through this week as I've thought about this passage in John, the 103rd Psalm, finds its way into, it's a psalm, it was intended for singing, we sing the 103rd Psalm in here, but it finds its way into other songs. And Laura Story's version of Psalm 103 was the one uh, I was singing over and over. Matt Redman has a beautiful song, a thousand reasons, ten thousand reasons, about this psalm. If we contemplate all the reasons to bless the Lord, Jesus describes in this chapter. A trust, trust for troubled hearts. And then moving into the second half of John 14, he encourages his followers that we are covered. That he is our hope. Jesus is dealing with our loneliness in this passage, verses 15 through 24. He knows that we will need his presence in a special way at times. His disciples have had him with them for the last three years, covering them, helping them. And Jesus says that one of his promises is that when he returns to the Father, that he will send them another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, verse 16. Now, Jesus has just told them in verse 6 that he is the way and the truth and the life. And now he tells them that he will send another helper who is the spirit of truth. Jesus had them covered. From then on and even to now, believers are covered by the indwelling Holy Spirit. That's Jesus' promise. 
That's Jesus' comfort to his followers. The word helper, parakletos, translated also as comforter and as advocate. Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, who became a human being and who lived in perfect obedience to God throughout his earthly life, was a helper and a comforter and an advocate to his disciples. He is still those things to his followers even now. But as he prepares them and us for the separation until he comes again, and he says that in this uh, chapter, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. But in the meantime, he encourages us that we will not be alone. The third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, will be given and will indwell us and will never leave us. And this is a person. It's not merely a force. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, you know Him, for He dwells with you and will be in you. The third person of the Trinity will be given to us and never leave us. We are covered. Jesus knows that we will feel like orphans at times. He says that in verse 18, living in the wrong world. And so he promises to come and live with us. He gives us the greatest possible company for those who love him. The Father with the Son dwells, he says, dwells. What's a dwelling? It's your home. Our home is our dwelling place. And God makes his dwelling place in our hearts. He will dwell with us. In Jesus' incarnation, he walked this earth as one of us. He slept here. He played here. He worked here. He loved here. He could be seen and heard and touched and spoken with. He was truth incarnate, truth in a body. His promise here is that another helper will be given, a second advocate. However, he tells them that they will not be able to see this advocate, this counselor or comforter, as they could see Jesus. And yet, we will see this spirit of truth because this helper will live within us, will dwell with us and in us. He says that the Father who loves us will send this helper out of love for us, and we will not be alone. Now, we know what authentic advocates are and what they do. They are real. They're not imaginary. And Jesus promises to defend us in a real way. He's promising to stand in the way of those who harm us, to speak well of us in a world that has very, very, very tiny ears for spiritual things. They don't hear those things well. He promises to encourage us and to be here with us and to comfort us when we need it. And the Holy Spirit will prod us along when we need that instead because he's a comforter and an advocate for us. Jesus is promising his presence, the helper's presence, and the Father's presence. In that day, verse 20, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Verse 23, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Jesus promises not only to be within us, but to surround us. Because of the Holy Spirit, Jesus is not promising that we will have no troubles. That's not the promise. 
Jesus in chapter 13, verse 21, we read that he was troubled in spirit. And here at the beginning of chapter 14, when it says, let not your hearts be troubled, he's not saying, don't let trouble creep into your hearts. This is present tense. Their hearts are already troubled. He's encouraging them to stop being troubled in heart, and he gives them a solid reason for this. He tells us we need not despair that when we feel lonely or overwhelmed or troubled, he has us covered. We're not alone. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Forget not any of his benefits to us. The best being that he is with us and for us always. He has us covered. As our helper and advocate, Jesus promises to advise us, to let us know God's way, and he's promising to really do this, to really do this, not just figuratively and not just in our imaginations. He tells us that we will not be able to see what the world cannot see. Verse 17, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, namely his company, his presence with us. The world cannot understand that. Apart from God's love in Christ, this makes no sense. Verse 19, yet a little while and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. We just sang that as we began worship this morning. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone because I know he holds the future. We can face uncertain days because he lives. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Because I live, you also will live, Jesus said. Notice Jesus is speaking at this point to them. He says to you, but this is plural you. It's helpful because in the Greek, like in the South, it's clear whether it's you singular or it's y'all. And this in the Greek is y'all. He told them about the helper about the parakletos, together. Jesus places them and us in company of believers, in squadrons of the faithful. Jesus did not say that individual audiences, that just me and Jesus, that's all that we need. Instead, Jesus promises to be with us, with y'all, in the plural, as helper and as advocate. Jesus did encourage us regularly to invest in, in, in time alone with the Lord, to be able to pray, and to be able to pray all of our prayers all of our concerns, all of our worries and fears and laments and praises without any distraction about what anyone else might think about it because our lives can be messy. Our honest prayers can be messy. Sometimes people might not understand that, but God does. And we can pour out our hearts, even our complaints, our laments before the Lord in prayer. But when there's an urgent need, the Lord most often comes to us through other human beings, brothers and sisters in Christ, people like ourselves with their own wounds and their own limps and hesitancies and shortcomings but with the Holy Spirit, the advocate, the helper. 
That means that Jesus is also sending us out of our prayer closets, out of our time alone with the Lord, away from our quiet ponderings and even our daydreams so that real helpers in physical form can aid us. Jesus sends us as an example that we can see, an advocate to counsel, a champion who's strong when we are weak, a person with gifts that we need but don't have at the moment. That's what a body of Christ does. And at other times, Jesus will send us out to be those real tangible helpers in his name. That's the work of the Holy Spirit through the body of Christ. We declare in the Apostles' Creed that we believe in the communion of the saints. And we do. Jesus says that his way uh, for life is marvelously dependent upon the communion of the saints. What we would privatize, Jesus makes public. What we might selfishly personalize... Jesus puts on full display among the faithful. And what we might be inclined to hold really close like a child does with a teddy bear, Jesus may take away from us so that we can see just how much more he has to give us through others than we ever could have possibly held on to on our own. Jesus is at work through his Holy Spirit in the troubles of life. And then he promises in verse 25 through 31 his peace through the Holy Spirit. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace that comes from God is given peace. It cannot be attained in any other way. This is one of the distinctive characteristics of God's peace. It cannot be earned. It cannot be seized. We can't just charge in and grab hold of God's peace and take it for ourselves. It's a gift. The fearful or troubled heart is a heart that's in need of a gift. Not another task. Think about it. When your heart's troubled, do you want one more thing to do on your to-do list? That's not what God gives us. It's a heart that needs to be opened. Not burdened with guilt. Not burdened with another duty to do. Peace, as given by Jesus Christ, is His accomplishment in us, not not our attainment of him. It's a gift. The disciples, through their time with Jesus, have grown in faith, but they have more growing to do. Through Jesus' death and resurrection and ascension, sending the Holy Spirit, another helper, they will grow even more. Not in independence, that's the human problem now, everyone wanting to go their own way and then to be affirmed in so doing. Jesus says that growth involves greater dependence, dependence upon him. And then we're not locked into needing the affirmation or the approval of others. What we earnestly desire is the smile and the favor of God. The disciples have been learning and at times forgetting. Though their time with Jesus, they have been learning this. God is sovereign. God can do anything he wants to do. And they've learned that God is love. That he is for us. He wants to do something for us. And that God is a covenant-keeping God. He's bound by his own word. He will do something. And so Jesus wants their faith as he prepares to leave them.
He wants our faith, even to this day, to feed off the character of Christ himself. He will send another helper. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Beloved, we are covered. We are covered. And as we come to the Lord's table, we remember that Holy Communion is a sacrament. It's not just us gathered here eating a crumb of bread and drinking a thimble full of grape juice. Jesus is the host of the table. He welcomes his people here. And through the Holy Spirit, he meets us and he dines with us and us with one another. And we are to feed upon him by faith. It's one enactment of the communion of the saints. Jesus said, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Holy communion is a tangible remembrance of Jesus, of his teachings, but more than that, of his life and death and resurrection as we anticipate his coming again. As we come to the Lord's table this morning, the invitation and the urging of the Lord is to all those who have put your trust, your faith in Him, though your hearts may be troubled, though there may be much on your mind, though there may be things in your life that right now are so confusing, discouraging, that He has you covered. He has given His Holy Spirit as your helper and your advocate. And He would give you His peace right in the midst of trouble. Not saying I'm going to take that trouble right away, which is what we would like, at least I would like that. But in the midst of it, you will know my peace because I am with you. And that's what's promised and set tangibly before us as a reminder, as a remembrance, and as the Lord meets us in the Lord's table. So if you have put your trust in the Lord, though your hearts may be troubled, He intends this as a meal for His peace to you. The Apostle Paul says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that on the night in which he was betrayed, the Lord, uh, the Lord Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, This is my body. It's given for you. Do this whenever you eat it and remember me. And then in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it and remember me. For when you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. As you are um, brought forward by uh, one of our elders, uh, you will come and uh, take the bread and the cup as it is given to you and uh, commune uh, as you will in receiving that. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this bread and cup set apart for your holy purpose, for the blessing of your people. As you remind us that you have us covered. And so we pray for the blessing, the communion of the saints as we commune now and as you equip us and send us out to commune with others, and in your name, amen.
Jesus said, the helper, the Holy Spirit, we will send to you, who will bring to your remembrance all that Jesus said, and even more than that, all that Jesus did. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. The peace of God is a gift. There's nothing you need to do to earn it or deserve it. We remember again, Jesus did it all. That we would receive it by faith. Father, in this sacrament we come and our hearts are full. We thank you for such a great gift, eternal life, the indwelling of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit with us and covering us at all times and even for eternity, that we would be with you. We thank you that we have your peace in troubled times, in troubled world, in troubled lives. We thank you it's a gift that you didn't give us another task or duty or job to get done, that you didn't tell us to try harder, but this table lays out for us your free gift, the beauty and the power of the gospel. And we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless your holy name as we remember again at this table all your benefits to us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Respond to the gospel as we sing again the song, All is Well. Receive God's benediction and go in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, indwelling and filling you now and always. 
Amen.